everybody, this is John for Pioneer Nexus MTG with another deck overview, this time with Grease Fang, the Forgotten Decks. So this is a t look at the other two variants of Grease Fang that do sometimes seem play. That is the Marnu and Esper variants. Now there are innumerable amounts of cards that can fit in these decks, innumerable different ways they can be built, but mostly they, have, they have tend to kind of coalesce around these two builds. They have kind of fallen by the wayside as the Abzian has definitely become the most played version. But this is a deck you should be aware of, the decks that you should be aware of. The first one is the Mardu variant, which is kind of like an amalgamation of Abzan, Grease Fang, and Rakdos side by side, and neither one doing the strategy particularly well. Um, obviously, you have Grease Fang, which allows you to reanimate, for lack of a better term, uh, vehicles in your graveyard, or Helion the second, obviously being the best, hitting for 13 flying damage out of nowhere with haste. Then the Sky Sovereign, you know. Reanimating it, dealing 3 damage to one target, dealing 3 damage to another target, hitting your opponent for 6, all those good uses. Uh, one of the downsides of not playing green is you don't get to play Asika's Chariot, which is arguably the second best vehicle to reanimate. And so you're kind of left with this kind of amalgamation of a deck that only has certain ways to filter its pieces and doesn't have self-mill of the green decks. Uh, but beyond that, you are playing a kind of Mardu-esque or Rakdo-esque impersonation with Thought Season Fatal push during your early turns to disrupt your opponent. Season Hellblade as a 3-1 threat that can discard cards, getting rid of vehicles out of your hand, very similar to what a Rafine's Informant does in the uh, Abzian version. Blood Tithe Harvester as a way to have a 3-2 body on the field pressuring your opponent, and the Blood Tokens can allow you to discard vehicles. Cathartic Pyre is a split card, deals either 3 damage to a target creature or a planeswalker, or discard up to 2 cards and then draw that many cards, and then dreadboard to deal with any problematic creatures or planeswalkers your opponent might control. Lilian the Veil, split card, get rid of my vehicles, edict my opponent. Uh, Bone Crusher Giant, wait also, once again, kind of doing a knockoff version of uh, Rakdos, Fable the Mirror Breaker, happens to fit quite nicely in with your animation strategy, uh, deals with the wrong half problem of the deck, you know, different tokens, etc. Um, definitely a way to take over the game with Blood Tithe Harvesters or Bone Crusher Giants. And then Kologon's Command, way to rebuy things out of the graveyard um, since you're not running the reanimation spell um, that we'll talk about in a second in the other version, which is. Uh, da, 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 can't stay away, so that's a kind of way of rebuying. Uh, sideboard, you kind of get to juke into, once again, more of an uh, Rakdos style deck with Vanishing Verses and Abrades to deal with uh, your opponent's creatures. Uh, duress to help disrupt your opponent whether they're on control or combo. Also disrupt against hate pieces they might bring against the combo. Portable hole as more removal spells and ways to deal with things like rest in peace and such. A braid, obviously a split card, very good against creatures, very good against other vehicles. Vanishing verse, good against the vast majority of things played in the format. Although, you know, I'm not good against five color Niv. Um, also doesn't kill everything. For instance, doesn't kill Teferi Hero of Dominaria. Painful Truths when you need a little bit of card draw against Grindy decks. Brother's End is a nice split card against artifacts or creatures. And then Leyline of the Void, primarily here for Is It Phoenix and the Mirror Match. Extinction Event when you need a Sweeper. And let's talk about the Esper variant. The Esper variant is not dissimilar to what the uh, Mardu version is trying to do. But, you know, it's a little bit different in what it's trying to execute. It has a lot more card cycling with copies of Faithful Mending and Tainted Indulgence as ways to discard things. Also plays copies of Consider to kind of filter your draws. Fatal Push to disrupt your opponent's creatures. Cling to Dust as an, you know, graveyard hate plus way to draw cards. Rafine's form, Rafine's inform as ways to discard cards. And then, you know, obviously Parhelion, Sky Sovereign, Grease Fang. Get to want to run on one of Shieldred. Get to run a couple, couple copies of Dig Through Time since you're seeing so many cards and put so many cards in the graveyard. But the main thing this variant does, and I'm not seeing it in this version, so maybe I should get to another version, is Ledger Shredder and Rafine. Uh, Ledger Shredder obviously has the connive ability to discard things, and then Rafine has whenever you attack with creatures you're able to connive, uh, give, giving it a very powerful uh, kind of loot ability to kind of pressure your opponent, force them to deal with that, and then bang Grease Fang plus whatever's in the graveyard to kill them. Uh, sideboard. You're seeing a lot of the same op. Oh, Rafine, speaking of which, kind of a nice sideboard juke, although I would rather see this in the main deck, I think, if I were building the deck. But, you know, it's an 1 4 that whenever you attack, target 
attacking creature connives X, where X is the number of attacking creatures. Obviously, this allows you to kind of cycle through your deck quite nicely, build up threats on their own, force your opponent to deal with that. Rest of the sideboard, Stubborn Anal, way to protect your combo, especially if you have a four power or greater, namely Grease Fang. Portable Hole, way to help deal with problematic things like Rest in Peace, while also helping to stem the tide against aggressive decks. Cling to Dust, once again, other graveyard hate against uh, Grease Fang, Phoenix, etc. Unlicensed Service, same thing. Void Run, uncounterable answer to basically anything, whether it be Leyline in the Void, etc. And Supreme Verdicts when you're dealing with opposing creature decks. Redain when you need to disrupt your opponent's strategies. Uh, primarily Control and against um, Mono Green can come in, Disrupting Karn, etc. And can come in against Lotus Field Combo, although this really only hits card out of Mono Green. It's so probably not good in that matchup. And then obviously the Shield can be quite good against Mono Red-esque decks, especially if they happen to be on an older burn strategy. So these are the kind of variants you might expect to run into if you're not playing against Abzan Grease Fang. Very rarely will you see these versions. Um, personally, I'm kind of a fav favorite of the Esper variant. You know, the Ledger Shredder plus um, copies of Rafine, especially in the main deck. And you kind of have this plan of like Ledger Shredders plus Rafine Informants plus these um, kind of triggers from Rafine. And you get to play these... Uh, you know, vanishing versus etc kind of clear the way quite a nice strategy overall although i do think it is significantly weaker than the abzane version as you know an asika's chariot on its own can often stabilize the game um so just decks that you should be aware of overall when playing in the meta but most vast majority of the time if you see grace fang you expect it out of the abzane colors but there are other colors out there, and these are the colors that were kind of being played with until some of the, the other cards got printed for the Absian variant. You know, things like Eldritch Evolution, um, all the self mill stuff out of them, you know, Witherbloom Command, Grizzly Salvage, you know, etc. The self mill has proven to be a little bit more effective than the, the discarding version, but, you know, these versions do exist. You should be aware of them. They have many of the same issues that the Grease Fang versions do. They're vulnerable to graveyard hate, but they do have that turn three not draw potential. So any deck that can hit you for 13 damage on turn three and kill you on turn four tends to be pretty solid in the meta. You know, weak to Karn, weak to graveyard hate. It's hence why you have these jukes or just anti-sideboard cards, things like Vanishing Verse, etc. Just ways to answer those. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hope to see you for the next video.